What you're about to hear was generated entirely using this mathematical sequence. Take a listen. Okay, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. I get it, it doesn't sound very good, but check out what happens when I add this backing track to it. The sequence is called the Recommend Sequence. And you're probably wondering, how do you go from a list of numbers to sound? And why does it sound so good? Or at least tolerable? I'll answer that in a bit, but let's first actually examine the sequence and the numbers that it generates. And we'll generate a few numbers of our own. Okay, so I have written here the sequence. What's going on guys, me from the future here. And I know some of you dislike mathematics, you don't like this derivation. Stick with the video guys, you're gonna see some exciting stuff at the end. You can see that here, and it's defined as follows. This first thing gives you the first element, the a is zero, where n is zero. And then there's two ways to generate the next element. You can see that a n depends on its previous element. And there's a condition, and it equals this here. Um, if a n minus one minus n is greater than zero and is not already in the sequence. So in a sense, the sequence is generating unique numbers and it equals this otherwise. So let's uh, go through some elements. Well, we know when n equals zero, a n equals zero. That's the first condition. So I'll write a zero here. Now a one, there's two options. It can either be, well, a, remember n is one here. So this is a zero can either be a zero minus one or a zero plus one. And this is equal to minus one, and this is equal to positive one. Now we know that it's only equal to this if this whole thing is greater than zero, and this is less than zero, so it has to be equal to one. Uh, we can do the same thing for a two. It's got two options. In this time it can either be a one minus n is equal to um, two here, or a one plus two. So this is equal to negative one and this is equal to three. And like before, this is less than zero. This requires it to be greater than zero. So we have to pick the second option, three. Then we do a similar thing for a three. A three has two options. It can either be a two minus three or a two plus three. But a two is three, so three minus three is zero or six. And zero is not greater than zero, right? It's equal to, so therefore we have to ditch the first option and go with six again. And we keep going for a four. We have a four, there's two options here. It can either be a three minus four or a three plus four. Well, a three is equal to six, so it can either be two or 10. Now this time, um, the first number is two, so it is greater than zero. And then we have to check if it's already in the sequence. And it's not in the sequence so far. So our next element is two. So you can see it start going backwards. And eventually you get more and more and more elements and you can keep building up a infinitely long sequence this way. All right, guys, I'm back in Python. Um, generating the sequence of numbers is actually super easy in Python. So say I want to generate 126 terms. Uh, the first element is zero and I can just use a little for loop with uh, generate the two options and use a little if statement to decide which term to append. And I know what some of you in this uh, elitist Python people are gonna be mad about me using a for loop in Python. Well, too bad. So I have a formula here. What this gives you, it gives you the frequency of the nth key on the piano. So you have your list of terms. It goes zero, one, three, da, 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 da. And you can map each one of those to the corresponding key on the piano and use this formula to get the frequency. Now, the problem is, is that as n gets too large, the frequencies become too high or obnoxious in some cases to hear. And so what you do is rather than generate the frequencies higher and higher and higher, you say, okay, if n gets past a certain point, you instead map it back to the lower frequencies. And it sort of, it becomes this periodic um, thing where the higher frequencies get mapped back to the lower ones. So you never exceed the scale of what you can hear um, yourself. And so that's what this function here, get piano frequency does. It takes in a number n and it returns the corresponding frequency. And then I can use this uh, function here, ignore these top two, 
to generate the frequencies of the chromatic scale. Uh, and I say, okay, I don't want to generate any notes that are higher than 600 hertz because that's, those notes are really obnoxious or you just can't hear them. And uh, you can plug it in here. And what I do in this uh, code, I don't want to get into it too much, but you can look into it. Um, I generate the, the fundamental frequency and uh, an array of times. And then I, here I'm getting the first few harmonics of that frequency in a sine wave format. And I append this to this DD. So I have a bunch of notes here. And then what I do is I unravel all those notes so that I get a big long sequence. And then I can save this as a wave file and I can play it here. And you can see what the chromatic scale is like now. Now, in my opinion, the chromatic scale doesn't sound great. And there are other mappings you can do as well. And in that tune that I played you at the beginning of the video, instead of mapping it to the chromatic scale, which was every key on the piano, I mapped it to the minor blues scale, which were only notes in the minor blues pattern. So I skip some keys of the keyboard. And so the minor blues is, um, the frequencies are given here. So this corresponds to uh, the different notes, right? And then I just map N to these notes. And if N is too large, if I have like 211, right? There's not 211 frequencies here. It again maps back into this frequencies so that you don't get notes that are too high or that you can't hear. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to play that initial tune again. And I'm also gonna combine it with an animation of this. So you not only get the visual understanding of what the sequence is, but also the audio understanding Anyways, enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also, I've given you the code to play around with this sequence and you can look up various scales that exist in musical theory. And you could try applying this recommend sequence, looking up the frequencies like I did in this video and generating your own music. And so I'm curious if you do that, please leave a comment in the video and let me know what you're up to. Anyways, thanks guys and I'll see you later.